Hey everyone, and welcome back to my completionist playthrough of the Baldur's Gate Saga with SCS and Ascension. So, continuing our conquest of Sendai's Enclave, only the most trusted and high-ranked henchmen of Sendai remain in our way. We've already met Daitha, whom we were going to fight in the chamber up ahead, but before we slaughter them all, <laughs> let's do some level-ups. Uh, so first, Senashira is going to become a level 27 mage, which is going to be a great level-up for her uh, because of this right here. She's going to receive an additional level 9 memorization slot. Now, Kirinai is going to reach her final level in the game, which is a little sad, but unfortunately this is just how it needs to be. And I think we might go for another spike trap, which in total is going to give her four spike traps and four time stop traps. And uh, yeah, as you can see, this level 40 in Thief requires 8 million experience, which is the experience cap of the game. And since Kirinai has those nine levels in Kensai and the uh, 250,000 experience spent on those, she is not going to be able to uh, advance to that level, even if we do reach the experience cap of the game. Um, and also we have level 29 on Sarvok, and we've been working towards getting Smite, so let us obtain it. Now, before we go into some fights, we have to remind ourselves of the fact that in the battle against Odamaron, we were all breached, which of course me meant that we have lost uh, all of our magical protections against fire, and our chaotic commands, most importantly. And that means that we are now vulnerable to charm, confusion, and uh, above, all, above all else, stun. So we're going to have to do things uh, a little bit differently now. Let's just heal Jahira before we do anything else, and uh, also I think we're going to first distribute some potions of invulnerability to everyone that can drink those, which basically means everyone except Imwen, uh, just to give ourselves some better saving throws. So let's do that. Uh, next, well, let's wait for Jahira as well to get that. Uh, we are going to also use something that we have not used yet, and that is going to be the Simulacrum coming from Viler's Helm. So any class that can equip a helmet can take advantage of this uh, simulacrum here, and what that is going to do is create a clone of uh, Saravok in this case, uh, which is going to have 60% of his level, but is going to be otherwise capable of doing anything that real Saravok can do. It's going to be able to attack, use his high-level abilities, or um, you know use spells if it's a spellcaster, but of course, since the level of the simulacrum clone is lower, that means that on spellcasters uh, it also, uh, of course, uh, affects the spell selection of the simulacrum. But uh, it is a powerful play, which is uh, why I generally don't use simulacrums or simulacra uh, coming from either Viler's Helm or the, the level 8 spell, but here we are going to do it. Uh, but actually, before we do, we are going to equip Saravak with uh, this equalizer in one of his weapon slots, just so that the simulacrum also has that available. And uh, yeah, now we can do it. Now that we have this clone active, we can also buff up everyone with Remove Fear again, because uh, some of our characters lost it, like Anaman. And uh, we are going to also buff up uh, the real Saravak with Death Ward. And we're going to give him two potions of magic protection again. Uh, we are going to drop our wands, uh, but we can keep everything else on him, because we don't really care about the charges on the Ring of Gax or the Cloak of the Sewers. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to go into a fight with someone who is going to be able to drain his item charges. But other than that, we can keep everything on him, just for the benefits that these uh, items what? grant him. Let's drink... Uh, two of those potions, and uh, we're also going to buff Saravok up with uh, negative plane prote protection coming from Jahira, and we're going to cast Soul's Searing Orb on Anaman. Uh, also, speaking of the Simulacra, this gives me an opportunity to uh, point something out that I just forgot to talk about whenever we were using projected images. And uh, this is the uh, fact that these quick slots here of the simulacras and uh, the projected image clones are grayed out here with SCS on board. Uh, that's because uh, in the unmodded game they can use the items placed in their quick slots, which means that this is pretty abusable in the fact that you can use some consumable resources in an unlimited fashion. Because uh, you can equip the caster with some rare scrolls, for example, like scrolls of time stop, or uh, wish, or some uh, items with uh, very low limited charges, and then use them, uh, you know, just to your heart's content from the simulacrum or the projected image, without losing your real scrolls, of course. So uh, SCS just grays out the quick slots of uh, these clones, which is a little bit unfortunate in the fact that they cannot heal themselves with potions, for example, or they cannot uh, use uh, some real resources uh, uh, 
other than the very abusable ones. Uh, but anyway, now we should be should be ready. We are uh, having this uh, equalizer sword. Um, first, uh, like equipped on both Sarvok and his simulacrum, but we are of course going to switch to the Ravager, and those are the only two weapons that, that really matter here. And uh, we are going to also have Sarvok, uh, Anaman, close. Because this path here is always a problem when it comes to pathfinding to get everyone through uh, quickly. So we're going to just go with our simulacrum first, just to perhaps bait some kind of initial spells uh, that these uh, opponents might want to throw in. And we are going to talk about them in a second once we see them. <laughs> Alright, so here's Diatha. You may have fought the Elemental Prince and won, but I am not so easy to kill. Destroy them, my minions. And yeah, she has some friends with her. First, this Hive Mother, yet another Hive Mother. And then we have this Nabasu, who has the Death Gaze that can stun and uh, deal some damage. Then we have the Demon Knight, with a couple of uh, decent spells at his disposal. Uh, he can remove magic uh, and dispel our potions of invulnerability, but we have tons of them anyway. Um, for to use on some other fights. Then we have this ancient vampire who might be a little problematic and Diatha herself is a level 20 cleric which is not too special uh, other than the fact that she has 95 magic resistance and her melee attack with her whip can slow, set your strength down to 3 and deal additional 20 cold damage but she rarely ever gets a hit off anyway so we're not going to be really concerned about that. Sure. And now we of course have doubled our Ravager Vorpal hit power here, just to get rid of this Hive Mother as quickly as possible. So we're going to get our Simulacrum and real Sarvok next to that Hive Mother to quickly uh, instant kill her with our Ravager. And uh, we're going to use this Soul's Searing Orb on uh, onto this ancient vampire, and unfortunately Anaman can miss with it, because uh, his Thako with this uh, weapon is uh, not the best, but if he doesn't miss, uh, since the ancient vampire is undead, it's going to mean that she is going to receive some fire damage and get blinded, even if she does make her saving throw. So we're going to use that here quickly. Get this Simulacrum and Sarawak there, let's switch to Ravager. And our Simulacrum here is going to be able to use Greater Willwind, and we're going to use that as on Sarvok as well. And now that we have all of these attacks, we're just going to try to get rid of this Hive Mother quickly. Uh, let's see... Okay, it seems like we did not miss with our... Uh, with our Soul Searing Orb, that's nice. And we're going to uh, protect Anaman against level drain with his improved Mace of Disruption, disruption and uh, throw in a quick Holy Smite that actually can uh, get some decent results here uh, against all of these evil opponents. Uh, we're also going to bring Senashira a little bit closer, perhaps Jahira, and we're going to go into stealth with Kirinai and bring her closer as well. Uh, perhaps we're going to be able to do a quick backstab on Daitha, we'll see. Uh, okay, now let's just monitor how this uh, Hive Mother is doing. Alright, she is dead already. <laughs> very nice. Saravox, <laughs> our double Saravox team here, was very effective. Yeah, th that's a powerful play, creating a simulacrum, that's why I rarely do it. But uh, anyway, here it's very useful. And since we are, you know, low on resources, I thought that it, this would be a good idea to showcase the, the power of that kind of play. Uh, now we're going to want to bring Senashira in there, uh, just to breach Diatha here and get rid of her buffs. She has that Globe of Blades. I don't think she has... Um, yeah, she basically never has Shield of the Archons, and uh, indeed that is missing, so we can uh, safely breach her. And I think we're actually going to send our double Saravok team here to perhaps uh, kill this ancient vampire first, just so we don't have that kind of a problem on our hands. Yeah, we're doing some nice damage. Uh, Holy Smite is in effect, so we can bring Anaman in there as well. And uh, let's see. It seems like uh, the Ancient Vampire just died. Very nice. We can probably get rid of this uh, Demon Knight first then, because it has a chance to level drain, and that is going to mean that we're going to... Uh, once we get rid of him, we're going to just... Uh, be able to bring everyone safely into the fight and also not have to deal with its remove magic. Alright, there we go. 
<laughs> we are doing pretty well uh, here. Let's uh, set up for a nice backstab here on Daitha now that she has breached yes. and we can just go in without any worries now and get rid of that Nabasu. Alright, Daitha's casting. Hopefully we can interrupt that. 75 damage. It was okay. We've seen better. <laughs> And uh, yeah, boom, we have just obliterated them. <laughs> this went pretty well. Oh, well, the Ancient Vampire apparently managed to summon some some Dread Wolves there. Anyone else who wants to get killed? I think this is it. Anyway, let's just loot the, the limited spoils that come from this encounter. Just Diatha has a shield at her disposal. Um, the armor she had was the Drow armor that we're not interested in, but she has this Dark Steel Shield plus 4 with a nice armor class boost and 10% resistance uh, to four different things. This is really underwhelming how it's just 10%. Uh, if it was 20, this would be a nice usable shield considering that it has poison resistance which could be coupled with like Helm of the Rock for example and you know you could you could get a decent amount of it but uh, anyway, well, that's just it. It's not really going to be too useful to us. And now uh, let's pick up Saravok stuff from the ground. Uh, just like that. And I think we're going to be ready to proceed. Now before we do, I am, I am going to make a quick save here just to showcase a different outcome after what we're going to do directly next. Alright, so here we have Captain Egesag addressing us. So you are the one who has caused so much trouble. I must admit, I am not impressed. And here we have two good responses. I think I'm going to go with this one. The Send I think she can stop me by constantly throwing these pathetic slaves in my way. Your slaughter-filled progress has greatly alarmed my mistress. If I defeat you, my reward will be truly worthwhile. And here we have this spectator beholder that you might recognize from way back in Shadows of Am. Oh, Captain, my Captain. <laughs> Hey, why do you address me as such, Beholder? Why are you so poetic? You have a most peculiar attitude. I shall have to report it to the mistress soon. Oh, never mind that. I always wanted to say that. And there you go getting all upset. I just had a comment here before this ball spawn squashes you into so much mush. <laughs> that may not that may not necessarily happen. Uh, yeah. Anyway, on the off chance that you do manage to kill the ball spawn, won't Sendai just go to the matron mothers and take all the credit for her greedy little self? You speak the truth, my monoocular friend. I would rather claim the credit for such a deed myself. Have you a suggestion? I'm just thinking it would be so much better if you fought Seneshira in single combat. Then you could claim to have killed her all by yourself. Even the matrons couldn't refute that. Parades, gold, a new torture rack, it would all be yours. <laughs> so uh, yeah, first I'm going to show the outcome that probably most of you are uh, familiar with, which is engaging in that kind of duel. How do I know you will not betray me if I agree to do this? Not to worry, I have it covered. I happen to have a little Gia spell with me here. A loser of the match dies along with all their allies in the room. So what do you say? Are you a gambling woman? Well, this is not really a gamble, knowing the, our uh, skills here. But, okay, we are going to agree. Once you're all ready to start, I'll cast the Gia. So when one of you dies in the fight, everyone who followed that person dies with them. Alright, let's get this over with. And uh, this is something that only your protagonist can do, even if you switch the um, the leader of your party, for example. Um, it's not going to affect anything, it's always going to be your protagonist. And uh, this is a very underwhelming fight for someone like Seneshira, because Captain Ege Sag is just a level 25 Kensai uh, that uh, doesn't really present much of a threat, especially if we want to use any of these protections that we have. Like, we can just cast a protection from magical weapons and he's not going to be able to do a single thing here. And it's already over. <laughs> In one round. And yeah, now by the nature of that Gius, all of the drow that followed Captain Ege Sag die as well. Ah, so it ends. And so does my service with this particular drow dolt. I mean, what's with these drow? Have they nothing better to do than summon me for their stupid tasks? Hey, aren't you the spectator beholder from the Sahuagan city? That's me. And can I say again, thank you for releasing me from the one of the most boring tasks in creation? These drow will just never learn. How is it that you didn't die with the drow? Oh, what? Did you really think I would cast the Gias on myself too? That would be stupid. 
And uh, here I'm going to showcase something that uh, we are not going to use in our normal playthrough. We are going to reload in a second. But uh, yeah, we can uh, be pretty bloodthirsty here. Prepare to die. <laughs> we can actually want to kill this pretty friendly, you know, little weirdo of a spectator beholder. Please, I've got a brain too, and not just a bunch of eyes. I'm not going to fight you, of all people. Now that the good captain is dead, I'll just be on my merry way, thank you very much. Things to go, places to do, and all that. <laughs> you mean I don't get to kill you? Ha, you're way too powerful for me to even think about taking you on. Just don't collapse the whole mountainside until I'm out of here, alright? Alright, so here he's going to teleport out, and a cutscene would normally happen. But uh, I am going to quick load. And uh, we're going to do things differently now. Uh, first, let's re-equip ourselves a little bit and give this reflection shield to Kirinai. Uh, next, we're going to cast Physical Mirror on both of our Divine Casters. And finally, we're going to distribute some potions of invisibility. One to Senashira, one to Imoen, and one to Saravok. And I've also noticed that uh, Kirinai needs a fresh Wand of Spell Striking, so let's give her that. And there are also some potions in this bag that should be elsewhere. Uh, Alright, so now let's allow them to finish their cast and we're going to be able to go in there again and do this differently. Now actually this gives us an opportunity to say this to Captain Ege's Hag now. We'll see how impressed you are when you lie dying at my feet. Of course they're going to have the same conversation, but uh, we can say that we don't trust them and we'll never agree to this Gias business. If you do not agree, my archers will slay where you stand. I'm afraid you have little choice. But actually, we do have a choice. We can just say that uh, his archers should do their worst. As you wish. Open fire. And yeah, now we're going to hide Sinashira, Imoen, and Saravok. And uh, our other characters, Jahira, uh, Anaman, and uh, Kirinai, are actually immune to the projectiles of these archers. Uh, because, of course, uh, physical mirror and the reflection shield uh, reflects back the projectiles to back to their shooters so <laughs> uh, we are going to be able to witness something funny here because they are on this balcony or this might actually be below the arena platform but uh, in any case we cannot get to them to melee and they can't do anything about their position either so they can only shoot at us they have no other choice but of course uh, we are going to keep reflecting their projectiles back to them and they are essentially going to be able to just kill themselves with their own uh, shots <laughs> of course we are going to speed up the process but uh, first let's kill Captain Ege Sag this also gives us an opportunity to get a little bit more experience because we get to kill not only Captain Ege Sag but also the archers and now we're just going to equip our uh, characters with some slings with Irene sling and uh, our sling of Arverine here on Anaman uh, and also this gives me an opportunity to talk about slings for a little bit because they are a underrated weapon there was also a comment in recent times mentioning slings so I hope what we're going to do here is going to bring a smile to your face uh, Dan I believe commented uh, about slings but anyway, slings have some advantages, definitely have some things going for them, because first of all, they have the highest enchanted uh, enchanted ammunition in the game, these bullets plus four, which also have a plus five uh, damage bonus associated to, associated to them. Next, the launchers also get to a high enchantment, and uh, they are unaffected by the nerfs that uh, made bows less damaging. Uh, they still have the damage bonuses as well as thaco bonuses. Uh, coming from enchantment and finally slings get a damage bonus coming from strength so actually if we switch the belt here to give uh, Jahira uh, 22 strength um, her projectiles here benefit from the plus 10 I think yeah plus 10 bonus uh, coming from strength so uh, this is actually some pretty nice damage from 25 to 28 uh, of course the weakness of slings is that they only have uh, one base attack per round but uh, if you actually dedicate uh, a character to slings and get grand mastery plus these uh, gauntlets you can actually get four attacks um, normally and which of course means eight with improved haste which is a respectable amount or of course you can use uh, something that we're going to use right now on Jahira which is uh, give her 10 attacks uh, this round uh, by using whirlwind attacks that we have recently obtained on her and uh, that is going to make uh, a little machine gun out of her <laughs> being able to shoot these projectiles very quickly and she's like boom 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 Jakira is just wild <laughs> going crazy with the, <laughs> this sling and uh, yeah she was able to deal some nice damage and now we can of course uh, use our other characters as well to speed up the whole process
am willing. I stand amongst the righteous. <laughs> With vengeance. Take that. Right, and now the spectator is going to show up. We're going to have that conversation. I'm going to conduct it a little differently. Yeah, these draw will never learn, I suppose. What are we going to do now? Oh, you know, find the nearest hive, check out the ladies, the usual. You? I guess fighting for my life, the usual. <laughs> right, don't take it personally, but I've got to go. Nature calls and all that. Just don't collapse the whole roof until after I'm gone, if you'd be so kind. <laughs> and now we're going to have a final cutscene with Sendai, so let us enjoy that. Diatha is dead, and the rogue Ballspawn draws ever closer. Mythical, my Mind Flayer ally, you must stop the fool before this goes further. You <laughs> draws ever closer. Do not wave your tentacles at me, Mythical. I have no other choice. My minions are slaughtered. Even my priestess has been destroyed. <laughs> she is visibly indignant here. Like, how dare he wave his tentacles at her? Who does he think he is? If you wish to feast on the brains of those that fall in slaves, you will unleash your illithid on the ball child that invades the enclave. You must not allow the interloper to reach my inner sanctum. <laughs> I always like the expression to feast on the brains. Uh, but yeah, now we are going to have to soon encounter the last lieutenant of uh, Sendai, I guess. The Mind Flayer Mythical and his little army. But first let's loot Captain Ege's Hag and get ourselves this Bowstring of Gond that I have mentioned in the playthrough a couple of times already. Now we finally uh, get it in our possession. You can also loot these uh, Trow Archers with a quick loot, but you're kind of not supposed to loot anything off of them, so we're just going to leave them be. And uh, now let's just re-equip our Divine Casters. We had a little showing of what slings can potentially do. Let's also switch the belt here. Uh, I think Kirinai is going to go into melee, but actually first she's going to get improved haste, and finally Hanomen. Uh, Alright, so we are about to have our final encounter with the Illithids. So we have this Scion's Blade prepared, uh, Saravok is going to equip that. This is going to make him uh, immune to all psionics, we don't really have to worry about him, uh, even though his uh, Potion of Invulnerability buff was dispelled. That doesn't really matter all that much, we can heal a little bit on everyone. And uh, we're also going to now showcase something else. This Greenstone Amulet uh, haven't had the, a chance to shine too much so far, so we are going to use it because it is going to protect us from psionics and also a bunch of other different things. This uh, ESP, by the way, it's uh, extra sensory perception, which basically is another word for scrying. This doesn't really mean anything in Baldur's Gate, but uh, just <laughs> kind of a different thing, uh, just ESP here. Uh, it's nowhere in Baldur's Gate explained what that means. But anyway, also uh, we are going to use our improved hastes, uh, so we're going to have this on Jahira, and we are also going to use our new Amulet of Cheetah Speed, and I guess Hanuman is actually going to benefit from improved haste uh, this time. Now, before we do that, I just need to think for just a little moment about the the whole sequence of buffs that we want to do. I think we might also buff uh, Sinashira with protection from energy. Uh, so that in combination with her innate 20 fire resistance, she's going to be at 95 if we want to use any fire spells, although we're probably not going to have too much time to use fire storms. But just in case, we also, of course, are still using the Club of Detonation. I guess we can do that. And also buff up uh, Kirinai, give her some fire resistance as well. Right, next we're going to get uh, all of our improved hastes here. We're not going to hold back against these illithid. And now we're going to use this greenstone amulet. Uh, 
to dispense those uh, this psionic protection. Uh, basically, uh, we have very nice saving throws as well, like especially against spell. Uh, Senator is a bit of an exception, perhaps, with uh, minus six, minus seven on on uh, Jahira, of course, because of the Harper pin. But uh, Anaman has like minus one. Kirnai has minus five. Uh, basically. Uh, some uh, psionic abilities do give you an ability to save against them, like the psionic blast, the main one we want to be protected against. Um, in most cases, it does give you a save versus spell. Uh, the Ulitharids have a more powerful version of it that actually gives you a save versus spell at a minus four penalty, but there are also some psionic blast abilities that don't give you a saving throw, and uh, some other psionic abilities as well. So we are going to just pass uh, this amulet around and like use this on Imoen, for example, just so she can have a bit of a protection coming from that. And I think uh, we are at least going to give this to Kirinai and allow her to partake in that kind of buffing session here because of course she has uh, Methyl's Harp. If someone gets affected by that psionic blast and gets stunned, she is going to be able to get them free out of that. And we are also going to use it on Sinashira because of course she is our main character. She needs to be protected as much as possible. And I think this is going to be it. Uh, also, we need to, of course, properly equip Kirinai with weapons. Uh, we might as well have ourselves a uh, Globe of Blades and a Blade Barrier on our Divine Casters. And I think we are also going to have this True Sight coming from Kirinai's Hood active in the, the whole sequence. And basically, this one is going to be very much improved by SCS. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be it. I think we are prepared. And uh, there we go. Actually, first we're going to give uh, protection from level drain onto Anaman, and we're going to proceed forth. forth and uh, you can hide, Kirinai. Uh, so yeah, basically in the unmodded game, you would just meet a couple of Mind Flayers here. It would be very, very underwhelming, and uh, that would be it. But uh, SCS actually makes it a multi-phase encounter where there's going to be a couple of waves of Mind Flayers and Umber Hulks kind of uh, teleporting in. Uh, in this room and in the next one, there are also going to be some Thralls that the Mind Flayers have uh, mind controlled. Kind of uh, rushing to get us as well. First we have these two Vampiric Illithids, that's why I protected Anaman here against uh, level drain as well. Right, Anaman uh, now has 11 intelligence, so he can withstand two hits, but we are going to have to be careful about all that. We have potions of genius and potions of uh, mind focusing, so we are going to be able to buff our characters uh, up whenever they get too low on intelligence, but we're going to have to be careful about that. And also, Illithids in general uh, use uh, plus two enchanted weapons, so all types of mantles or improved mantles are going to work uh, there. Alright, guys. Alright, finally. Here they go. There's going to be yeah, a lot of Umber Hulks and uh, some Mind Flayers approaching. Now, Kirinai is going to stay here, gearing up for a little backstab. And let's just allow them to first appear. You can actually attack them already, but let's do it properly. Let's be fair to them, even though they do not deserve it. Okay, here's an Ulitharid. We want to certainly get rid of him. Let's give a protection to Sanishira. Let's try to backstab this guy. Alright, we did manage to get some damage onto him. Of course, uh, Illithids in SCS have 50% physical resistance, that's why this backstab was not that impressive. But considering the low health pool of uh, Illithids, it's not too not too shabby. Alright, let me see. One intelligence on Anaman. We have to get you out of there, bro. Now anyone else affected? Nope. Just Anaman needs to be safe. And of course, what am I doing with this uh, Mace of Disruption here? We don't need it anymore. Seems like the Mind Flayers died here already. Uh, Imoen, you can buff yourself up with some mirror images. Alright, so the first wave is done. We already hear a teleport sound uh, in the second room. 
Uh, this is going to be a big encounter, so let's just kind of approach it properly here. I am going to actually give spell immunity to abjuration onto Senashira because there are going to be two mages, and even though they are only level 16, let's be safe here with her buffs. And uh, let's let's go in. So yeah, here we're going to have. Uh, there's going to be two wizards. I think one of them is invisible. There's also going to be a couple of mind flayers that, of course, start out invisible as well. There are going to be two of these thrall fighters, which are level 20 berserkers, and uh, there are going to be two level 16 mages, some umber hulks as well. Uh, anyway, uh, what we're going to do is just unleash some AoE in the form of our Dragon's Breath, our last one. Uh, we might also actually unleash a uh, a cloud kill here uh, in the middle of all in this chamber. It's going to nicely uh, reach everyone and it is it is going to be able to instantly kill the Umber Hulks and just uh, provide some uh, more damage onto the fighters and uh, a an interruption mechanic for the casters. And uh, yeah, it, it is possible to like have one character behind and perhaps throw in a Firestorm in there, but I think this fight should be over in, in a matter of like two rounds or something, so this Firestorm wouldn't actually be able to do too much, uh, I think. Anyway, we are going to have to just get in there. Yeah, wait for everybody to show up. Here's Mythical. Unfortunately, there's nothing really that special about him. Um, he should be like an Alhoon, for example, with some uh, spells and whatnot. That would be cool, but uh, he is just a kind of a normal mind flayer with uh, nothing really that special. It would be great if we had remove magics. Unfortunately, we don't have any more of them available. Uh, we could throw in a dispel magic on Anaman, but I don't think we are going to, to do it. Also, Anaman, we're going to have to be careful with you here. Yeah, once he regains like five intelligence, we Buffing his intelligence is going to be a little bit more problematic because he would require actually two potions to make a difference. Whereas uh, on Jahira, for example, we only need to chug one potion of uh, mind focusing, for example, to uh, make her withstand one more hit. Uh, Animan can do that just all on his own with his 11 base intelligence. But anyway, let's see. We have some Olitharids. We have a mind player right here. Uh, this one is going to be the easiest to reach here, I think. And did we... Okay, our cloud kill is on its way. We of course have our uh, poison resistance, just Anaman doesn't have any. Well, Anaman could try and uh, get a firestorm going since he can't really engage in the opposition safely. Let's actually give him... Uh, well, he is going to be interrupted anyway by various abilities and our own cloud kill. Uh, just because of his positioning, we could get him out. And I think Saravak got a little bit blocked but not too badly. And I think from way in the back I might just reconsider the whole idea about Firestorm and actually have Anaman do something productive. Um, Kirinai still has her true sight, that should reveal the mages. Let's just quickly see what kind of pre-buffs they're rocking here. They cast protection from magical weapons, they just have Minor Globe and Spell Deflection, it seems, Improved Invisibility, Spell Turning here on the other one, I guess, and Minor Globe as well. Alright, we have some Dispels at our disposal if we want to go that route, but they might w die just by, just from our uh, Cloud Kill and our Dragon's Breath that is going to soon hit. We'll see how that goes. Might actually switch ammo into better ammo. And yeah, let's just kind of focus our attacks here. This one Mind Flayer died. Yes. Let's have our other people attack this one then. Oh, Alright, our Dragon's Breath did some nice work here. Nice. Actually, one of these wither wizards died. Mythical received some nice damage. I think uh, the other wizard, though, is still on the loose. Yeah, right there. We're going to have to deal with her soon. And uh, their illusions, I think, were dispelled. Okay, so we might quickly throw in a uh, spell sequencer with our two secret words and a uh, spell thrust onto her, just to make her available to be breached soon. All right, that's on its way. Let's go back to attacking. All of that is done. Let's pull back Imoen. You don't need to be there. 
Let's heal Jahira. Okay, you would need you would need a potion. Unfortunately, you just drank one. Now let's try to focus our attacks. Perhaps on Mythical now. He is already badly injured. He received some nice damage. Let's go back to some more slinging, I guess. On Jahira. Next round she is going to be able to drink a potion of mind focusing. Perhaps I should have pre-buffed her with one, but doesn't really matter. I think we are we are safe now. Uh, there's one more mind flare here. Animan already uh, regenerated, I guess, uh, his five intelligence. I think now we're also going to breach that mage, since we have a spare moment here with uh, with Kirinai, and we are going to actually go into melee with Jahira. Jahira can take care of that mage once that breach hits. Alright, there we go. And here we have just a Thrall Berserker. Yeah, that's... that Firestorm is kind of late. <laughs> that, that was just not not played too well. It was kind of like a reactionary uh, Firestorm instead of being cast uh, as early as we could, but no matter. This was pretty smooth. Yeah, way more interesting fight than in the unmodded game, but still, you know, not not an epic, uh, like a super epic fight. But uh, anyway, now we are done with it, and uh, we are just going to make some space here on, on Senashira just to loot some stuff. We can kind of get our equipment back online. We're not going to need Scion's Blade. Right, I think this is going to be it. Uh, first we're going to loot this container for this liquid mercury. And this is finally the ingredient needed to upgrade Angur Vidal. This is going to be a nice and important upgrade. I also have some ammo to throw out or sell. And we can just uh, loot some of these Mind Flayers. These Thrall Berserkers have some nice potions. Well, we can take all that. Why not? What is it? Okay, and I think uh, still in this episode, uh, since we are effectively done with the whole place, uh, I am going to do a quick crafting session, but not to waste too much time on the recording. I'm just going to prepare it uh, off-camera, I guess, and uh, see you in a moment. Alright, there we go. Now we're ready to return to our pocket plane and engage in a crafting session with Sespinar. And for the first time, this is actually going to involve some decisions on our part when it comes to crafting, because uh, some of these upgrade ingredients that we've managed to obtain recently are used to upgrade more than one item, but of course are spent in the process of crafting. So here we are going to have to choose which one of these items we want to upgrade. And here, of course, we have lost our drow chain and our drow bolts of sleep, because the pocket plane is considered a surface location, but we have already gotten all of the benefit we wanted out of the armor. So all we need to do is just drop these three things, I think, and we should be ready uh, to discuss those upgrades with our butler. But um, before that, I just wanted to show you the description of the un upgraded Angurvadal first, and it mentions that it's a legendary burning blade of Frithjof. And this name Frithjof, as you will see, they are not going to be too consistent with. But anyway, now let's talk to Sespinar. Sespinar, gladly serve the great one. Ooh! Ooh! Is nice sword, maybe? So first with the Heart of the Damned, we are going to be uh, able to upgrade the Short Sword of Mask. And it's also used to upgrade Gram, the Sword of Grief, a weapon that we have not obtained yet. Uh, basically both of these upgrades are irrelevant to us. Uh, the Sword of Mask gets a little bit more out of it, and uh, I am going to upgrade it here. And once we get Gram, I'm just going to show you on the screenshot what uh, 
its upgrade entails. It's very, very minor. But uh, anyway, now for more important upgrades. Alright, finally on Gurvadal, now that we have the liquid mercury and some gold, we're going to be able to put all of this together and get a very nice upgrade for this weapon. It's going to influence a lot for us. And now he's talking about the Purifier, which is one of the items that can be upgraded with the Eye of Tear, the other being Karsamir. And I think it's going to make a little bit more sense for us to upgrade Karsamir, actually. Normally, I am a pretty big supporter of upgrading the Purifier, because it gets way more out of the upgrade than Karsamir does. However, in our party composition and our kind of gear setup on Kirinai, I don't really see myself ever using the Purifier in her offhand. Um, basically, if you have a Fighter Thief um, with some... Um, proficiency points in Bastard Swords, this is a nice option to use together with Foebane sometimes, or if you are in a more uh, evil party, I guess, and have obtained the Flesh Armor, this is going to allow you to uh, stack Magic Resistance on uh, a Thief with use any item to higher amounts. Uh, or actually, if you have a two-handed based Fighter Thief that normally focuses on two-handed Swords and Quarter Staves, it actually still makes a lot of sense to upgrade the Purifier, because then you don't really need that small upgrade that Karasomir receives all that much. But uh, here, I think in our situation, uh, we are going to upgrade Karasomir, so we're going to pass on this one. I keep looking through undies, then. <laughs> oh, Holy Avenger Sword, huh? Nice. Alright, so Karsamir it is. Let's upgrade this one. Okay. Stand back then. Never use the recipe Good. And we're going to discuss a little bit more about these upgrades once we have the uh, upgraded Karsamir in our hand and uh, kind of see all of the descriptions of our weapons. But uh, for now, let's just continue crafting. Ooh! Ooh! forging is such nice work! Marvelous! Just Marvelous. All right, so Spectral Brand is going to be uh, upgradable with the addition of the Skull of the Lich. So let's do that. It is going to receive a, a bit of an upgrade. Uh, some of these properties from these upgrades, as you will see, come a little bit late, unfortunately. But uh, it is still going to end up as one of the best weapons in the game. Yeah, Ooh. Hmm. What's this? You got the hammer? Bow once drop hammer on big godly toe. Jump around and swear for days he did. Kick poor me all the way to Bator. Very bad week that. <laughs> anyway, uh, he's talking about the upgrade to the rune hammer. Now that we have the rune of Clan Geddon, or Clan Geddon, we're going to be able to upgrade that. And uh, yeah, not, not a massive upgrade either, as you will see, but still, it's something. Like string when you tie shoelaces together, but better! Yeah, here this is pretty unique. You actually get a choice, uh, a direct choice here, whether to upgrade the Dark Fire Bow or Terra Lash with it. But of course we're going to upgrade neither, because we want to upgrade Fire Tooth with it, which he is going to mention now. Huh. This could take all day! Hmm. Maybe could use it that string again. Not thinks of this one! Yeah, the Fire Tooth Crossbow, of course, as well, can be upgraded with the Bowstring of God, but I'm actually going to decline once more because I think he has a very funny uh, response to that. Fine, fine. How's it your way? I got back to digging through backpacks. Suspinar have no life anyway. Not even cute and girlfriend. <laughs> Poor Suspinar. <laughs> anyway, now we are just going to finish our upgrade session here with uh, the uh, upgrade of Fire Tooth. So let's get to it, and we're going to be able to discuss all of our new goodies in a second. Alright, we are definitely going to enjoy our new stuff here, says Pinar. Let's just re-equip ourselves a little bit. And uh, yeah, let's talk about our new acquisitions. So the Short Sword of Mask here gets uh, in another enchantment level. It was plus four, and it uh, also can drain levels now. Um, yeah, nothing really that we are going to use too much, but 
Anyway, we can put it away. Here the upgraded spectral brand, it's now plus five, grants negative plane protection, a little late on that, <laughs> and also has this ability to uh, give plus 10 Thaco for three rounds. And it's actually, you know, sometimes decent when you have a lower Thaco class able to use spectral brand and something else. You can just use this buff using spectral brand and then use another weapon to take advantage of this buff. So we could, for example, use it on Imoen, let's say, who can equip scimitars. Um, use this armor piercing strike and then re-equip her fire tooth crossbow for example and just receive that taco bonus it only lasts for three rounds though so it's not that great but plus 10 is really significant on a character like uh, Imoen for example and uh, also you know plus 5 enchantment here and instead of 1d4 cold damage and now deals 1d6 so this is going to be a weapon that we are going to use on Jahira. We are probably going to keep switching a little bit between the Club of Detonation, which is the more damaging option, and because of that, uh, you know, 15 points of fire damage that it procs quite often. But sometimes enemies are going to be uh, immune to fire, or sometimes we might just not want to deal with these random explosions from the Club of Detonation, so we might use uh, Spectral Brand on uh, Jahira, and then on... Uh, here and I, we are going to be using the upgraded Angurvadal. And as you can see, now they mention Frithjor. <laughs> so, so is it Frithjof or Frithjor, guys? And uh, as far as I know, there is no character uh, using either of these names in the Forgotten Realms lore. I think Frithjof, I only know from a Norse saga from Iceland. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no other references there, I think. But anyway, great weapon. Now instead of just plus one fire damage, it deals from two to five. Of course, plus five enchantment. It sets your strength permanently to 22 instead of just having that uh, one use uh, of it. And also immunity to level drain would have been nice earlier, but this is going to be great for uh, Kirinai. Now she is going to be able to pass this 22 strength belt onto Jahira. This 21 strength belt is going to go to Saravok, so basically upgrades all around. And we can use this spare 19 strength belt on uh, Emoen, for example. <laughs> if she used slings, she would be able to get some damage bonuses out of that. But at least for our convenience, she is now going to be finally able to carry some weight. And uh, perhaps if she goes into melee with something, with that short sword of mask perhaps, uh, she is going to have a way better Thaco now and be able to do some damage with it. And this also opens a belt slot on Kirinai. I might just equip her with this uh, Girdle of Fortitude just to have uh, one additional backspace. Or uh, perhaps we can give her one of these armor class belts because I think we're going to leave the belt of inertial barrier on uh, Anamen, but of course these armor class belts are not going to do a whole lot now, so we're going to, to think about that uh, in a little bit. Now, when it comes to Runehammer, our next upgrade, now it has an additional immunity to fear. It can... Uh, I don't think it had that uh, that strength upgrade, very similar to what Angur Vidal in its unupgraded form was capable of doing, and also it can cast Mass Cure. Um, that is capable of healing a little bit, but other than that, uh, not much more to it. Now, Fire Tooth Crossbow. Uh, all of these Bowstring of Gond upgrades, by the way, I think I'm going to show a screenshot of the Dark Fire Bow and Tara Lash, what, uh, how they look like with their upgraded uh, form. But basically, all they get is plus one Thaco, because these upgrades don't do anything special except just increasing the enchantment of the weapon. Um, by one. So here, you know, Fire Tooth gets. Uh, uh, actually, it's it's better when it comes to Fire Tooth because it also gets the damage increases, whereas the bows don't. So Thaco more damage. It's uh, very nice. Even better than it was uh, on Imoen. Now, finally, this Karsamir here upgrade. Uh, basically, all it does is just increase Karsamir's enchantment by one. So, uh, one, plus one to Thaco, plus one to damage, and a little bit more damage to uh, chaotic evil opponents. Nothing else is increased here. And I think it makes a little bit more sense in our case, because whenever um, Kirinai uses Karsamir, uh, she doesn't actually have that great of a Thaco with it. And sometimes we do resort to it for its dispelling capabilities. So in order for her to have a bit of an easier time to land some hits, we are going to, uh, you know, we have upgraded Karsamir because of that. Um, 
but when it comes to the purifier it actually gets its magic resistance upgraded to plus 30 percent and um, it also is then capable of casting a level 20 dispel magic just like Karsamir can and it also can cast mass cure uh, which is pretty irrelevant but uh, yeah whenever you're going for a kind of a different setup uh, that 30 magic resistance and that additional cast of dispel magic um, also with uh, combined with the uh, enchantment upgrade to plus five you know, it it makes a lot of sense for the purifier to get upgraded, but not really for us so much. And uh, also one more thing that I would like to discuss when it comes to Angor Vidal. Of course, sometimes Kiranai uses other other weapons like the Answerer or uh, her throwing dagger, which then of course is going to make her lose her 22 strength. But she has a very good base strength with 18 and exceptional 100. And uh, basically from, from those, she receives... Uh, 3 to hit and 6 to damage, whereas for 22 strength, if she, you know, kept uh, using that belt, for example, it's 4 and 10. So not much of a difference when it comes to Thaco, a little bit more damage, but whenever we switch to a weapon like uh, the Answerer, for example, uh, th this is more of a utility weapon with which we want to, of course, stack the debuffs, not so much deal as much damage as possible. Uh, when we want to uh, deal a lot of damage, we are going to switch to Angur Vidal. So I think this type of uh, gear composition that we are going to be using from now on is going to make a lot of sense for us. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to do this upgrade session in this episode because in the next one we are going to start uh, right away with uh, our final battle in Sendai's Enclave with Sendai herself. So anyway, for now I thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you next time.